When it comes to writing and debugging code, most developers' go-to tool will be an IDE. Now, IDEs are great. However, they're not the only way that you can visualize your code. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you four very unusual tools that will help you look at code slightly differently and will hopefully make your debugging process much more productive. The first extension that I need to tell you about, because it's a bit unusual, is called Grapple. Now, Grapple is a Visual Studio Code Marketplace extension. It's free, or at least it's got a free tier. And the interesting thing about this extension is it's going to analyze your source code and then convert it into a 3D city. Yep, a 3D city. So let's see this extension in action. OK, so to get going with Grapple, open up Visual Studio, do a search for Grapple, G-R-P-P-L, and basically it's going to be the one with this big purple G. Now, whenever you install this extension, at the bottom, whenever you open any project, Grapple will parse all of the files and folders within your project. So hopefully you can see at the bottom, Grapple's scanning and parsing all of my files. And after two to three minutes, Grapple's going to finish its scanning. And after that happens, we'll be ready to generate our 3D city. All right. We're now two to three minutes in the future. Grapple has finished its parsing and we're now ready to generate our map. And we do this by pressing Alt and V. Map generation takes around a minute. However, after it's finished, you're going to see a pretty cool 3D city landscape that represents your code base. So you can interact with your city with the mouse or the keyboard. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, all of that good stuff. Now, understanding your city is pretty simple. Anything which is light brown is a folder. Anything which is dark brown is a file. Anything which is white is a class. And anything which is blue is a method or a function. And these red things, these meant to represent structs, apparently. Now, you can click on any building. And from here, you can see where you can go to the related design item, which I'll cover later. And you can go directly to source code, which is useful. Now, one of the really standout things for this diagram for me is that it allows you to see complexity. And straight away, any buildings which are tall represent complex files. So we can see that this thing over here is complicated and this thing over here, this might need refactoring. Now, if I move my mouse over here, you can see this is cache.ps. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it's not something that I've written myself. Instead, this is a third party package. And from my experience, Grapple's map becomes a little bit less useful if you allow it to index and render files that you don't control. Now, the good news is that Grapple can be configured so you can exclude certain folders. Now, assuming you've got Grapple installed, you can access its settings from File, Preferences, and then Settings. Now, from Settings, just do a search for Grapple, G-R-A-P-P-L, and you'll find it's got 13 different settings. Now, if I scroll down, you'll find one which is called Exclude Folders. So basically, any folder that you want to exclude, anything that contains third party files or modules, add it in here to make your map much more readable. Now, a final thing to note about Grapple is that it doesn't just have an air view. It also has some project management tools as well. However, I didn't find these as useful. Now you can access these tools from the sidebar using this icon. And you can see straight away that we've got a few things on the left hand side here. So we've got some information which has been pulled from a Trello board. We've also got like a file explorer down here. Now, one quirk of Grapple is that every single time you load it, it's going to ask you to connect to either Trello or a Jira board. And despite connecting once, it asked me every single time, which is a bit annoying. Now, today I've connected to my Trello account and you can see here on my Trello boards, you can see I've got my swim lanes, my columns. However, none of my tickets get pulled through for whatever reason. Now, underneath, we do have a file explorer. And the thing I like about this one is that you can actually see all the functions contained in the file really easily. And clicking on a function is going to jump you to that line of code on the file itself, which is nice. Now, apparently I can connect these files to things like a design item. So in here, I can search for my Trello ticket. So I've got one which is called Preview. I can click on this, I can connect it, and I can click on Commit. Now, for my testing, if I do Commit, it doesn't do anything in Git. 
it doesn't do anything in Trello, so I'm not 100% sure what it meant to do, but you know, this is something to explore if this extension is exciting to you. So to summarize, this extension has some good bits and some bad bits. So to focus on the good bits, the air view is cool and it does give you a different perspective of how your project is structured. Now, the negatives are quite a lot. Now the extension is pretty new and there is a bunch of bugs. So generating the map is pretty slow. It is annoying that it indexes all your files every single time that you open up Visual Studio. Being prompted to connect to Trello every single time, again, is a bit annoying. So over the years, I'm hoping this extension gets improved. However, it is free and it's definitely worth checking out. The next tool is a browser based tool and it's useful for JavaScript developers and it's called the JavaScript Visualizer. The JavaScript Visualizer will allow you to understand how the JavaScript engine parses your code in real time. Now you can access this visualizer via a web browser for free by going to ui.dev slash javascript dash visualizer. The visualizer is pretty easy to master if I'm honest. At the top, you've got a bunch of controls around debugging your code. In the left hand side, you've got a code editor. And then on the right hand side, you've got the output from the JavaScript engine itself. And now that you understand how the editor works, let's look at how it can help you debug your code. Right, I've copied in a snippet of JavaScript so we can see how this tool works. Now, when it comes to debugging your code, you have two options. You can either step through the code line by line, or you can click on run and the engine, the tool, is going to pass all your code in a single go. So if I click on step, you can see that on the right hand side, we've got the output straight away. Now, the way that JavaScript works is that within our execution context, when your app starts, there's this creation phase. And what the engine's going to do is it's going to scan all that code and it's going to figure out what variables that it might need to assign. So in this example, you can see that we've got window, we've got this, and we've got X because X is being declared there. Now, if we click step again, you can see that the phase has moved on to the execution phase. And this means we're ready to run the code. Now, instead of stepping through everything, if I now click run, you'll see that my code's going to be running through. You can see it's updating here. And then eventually you can see that X gets assigned a value of two. Granted, this was a very simple example. However, over the years, when I've had bugs in production and my JavaScript code is returning data I didn't understand, by being able to copy that code, paste it into here, step through it so I can see what the JavaScript engine is actually doing has helped unblock me numerous times. The next extension that I want to talk about is called Code Viz Stat. Now, again, this is another free Visual Studio Code extension. However, this time around, this extension is going to provide you with a report and a graph and analytics on your code. Rightio, let's see this extension in action. Now, just like any other extension, you can install it directly inside of Visual Studio by going to the extension toolbar, doing a search for code viz stats, and the one that you want to install is viz uhq. Now, after you have the extension installed, you can right click on any folder and you'll see this option of code viz show stats and lines in directory. So let's say that we want to generate a report for my project. If I click on an empty space at the bottom here, click on show statistics, I'm going to get a report, for the whole project. Now, two things will pop up, a summary view, which is just basically a table view of all the data and then code viz. And code viz is where the report lives. The report is pretty easy to understand. At the top, we have a summary and this contains some useful metadata. So you can see that we have things like the number of files, the number of lines of code and the number of comments within the project total. Now, underneath, we have two graphs. The first graph is a folder explorer, which can be filtered by either the line count or a file count. And this is really useful for basically spotting where the complicated files are in your project. So you can see here that the public folder is the worst offender. Now, on the right hand side, you can see that we've got a view of the different programming languages used within my project. So you can see here, my project is made up of JavaScript, XML, JSON, CSS and HTML. And if you do notice any folders that you're worried about, you can then use CodeViz to do further analysis. Now, by clicking on the problem folder, you can see that CodeViz updates the graph and it shows you the children. 
And in the process, Solution Explorer automatically popped out. And you can see that now the public folder that I clicked on has been highlighted. And then repeating this process, I can explore the whole of my directory until I find all my problem files. So granted, that view isn't as immersive compared to the air view in Grapple. However, you don't have to wait for anything to be indexed. You don't have to be prompted to log into Trello. You get a report instantly, which can be invaluable as a day-to-day -day tool. The next tool is another online tool, and it's called Ast Explorer. So Abstract Syntax Tree Explorer. Now this tool works with multiple different programming languages, and it helps you understand how the compiler works. So in case you weren't aware, an abstract syntax tree is a hierarchical data structure that a compiler can use to make it easier to parse your code. So what happens is your code is broken into a tree-like structure containing nodes and each node represents different elements within your code so a node might be a statement an expression or an operator and using ast explorer can make it easier for you to analyze how your code's being transformed during compilation to access this tool just go to astexplorer.net now what you'll see is that on the left hand side here you have a code pen and ide and on the right hand side here you can see the converted code into ast now, in terms of language support, you can see we've got a bunch of things. So we've got our CSS, we've got our Go, GraphQL, Java, JSON, Lucene, PHP, Python, and more. Now, aside from this, we've also got stuff like uh, the parser type. So we've got things like Babel, we've got Flow, we've got Tenko, a bunch of stuff that I don't really know, but TypeScript as well. And then we've also got the ability to save stuff. We can also share our code pens just so we can work with other teams. Now, after you've pasted your code into As Explorer, once you start clicking on your code in the right hand side, you can see how it's been converted into Ast. So you can see in this code snippet, we've got a body, we've got a function and declaration. As I'm going through it, you can see which line of code it relates to because it's all in yellow. If I look at my variable declaration, we can see we've got a declarator. In here, we can see we've got an identifier. It's of type array expression. You can see here that we've got some characters. We've got some literal. And if you're looking to get a better understanding about how the compiler splits up your code into things that you can understand, using Ast Explorer can be an invaluable tool to help you on that quest. Before we part ways, I thought I'd leave you with one secret bonus extension, and it's called VS Code Animations. Now, this extension isn't going to help you code any quicker. However, hopefully it's going to make coding a lot more satisfying for you. Now, because we're pressed for time, I'm just going to show you my four favorite VS Code animations. So first off, you can see we've added animations to the sidebar. Now, normally when you click one of these, the sidebar just magically dumps itself on screen. However, now we have this nice glide effect, and this also stays consistent with the bottom bar as well. Now, aside from this, we also get animations when we load the control palette, doing a control shift P. And we also get transitions when we open new tabs. Woo, woo. And this is definitely more satisfying compared to tabs just magically being dumped on screen as normal. That concludes the tools that I wanted to tell you about in this video. I hope you found something which will help you look at code in a new light. Let me know in the comments below if you have. Now, before we leave, don't forget to do the classic YouTube stuff. So smash subscribe, click on like, click a bell, do all that kind of good stuff. I do a video every Sunday that will help you become a better developer. So don't miss out on that. Now, this video has covered a lot of Visual Studio Code, and if you want to learn about the best Visual Studio Code extensions in 2023, I've recorded a video which is linked to on the screen right now, so click on that to learn more. Otherwise, until next Sunday, happy coding.